Okay, hi there, welcome back. Jeff here with another video looking at some key diagrams. What we're doing, we're working through some absolutely key micro topics to start with and the diagrams that make such a big difference to your exams. So hopefully this is helpful. Let's choose a topic for a few minutes, which is actually quite often tested in part because students don't really get it. So let's spend a few minutes together on price elasticity of supply. Well, PES, or price elasticity of supply, measures the responsiveness of quantity supplied to a change in price in the market. And the best way of thinking about it is that price elasticity of supply tries to reflect and measure the ability of producers, suppliers, manufacturers, growers to change the, their output following a change in demand and the possible consequences for the marginal cost of supply. So when supply is price elastic, producers can respond quickly. They can respond easily to change in demand and without the need for a rise in price. In contrast, when supply is inelastic, then you tend to see prices rising quite quickly in a market where demand is growing. Let's take an example. Let's look at the market for avocado. Strong growth in demand uh, in many countries, the supposed health benefits. So let's look at the effect of an outward shift in demand for avocado. I've drawn the demand curve downward sloping, fairly inelastic, I suppose reflecting people's willingness and ability to pay for this product. But the key thing here is that demand has shifted out. And that will be the case for all of the, the diagrams to follow. Now, crucially, the elasticity of supply determines the ability of avocado growers, producers, to meet that increase in demand. Let me put in a supply curve for you. This one has a low, a low price elasticity of supply. It's, we call that price inelastic supply, where the coefficient of elasticity is less than one. So, for example, a 25% increase in price might only lead to a 10% increase in supply. Now, the original equilibrium was price P1 at output Q1. Can you see here that when supply is inelastic, growers find it difficult, at least in the short term, to respond, and therefore the market price will rise quickly from P1 to P2, and the quantity rises to Q2. But the key thing here is that when supply is price inelastic, prices increase quickly when demand increases. I'm going to keep that diagram, I'm just going to develop it by showing you a more price elastic supply curve that will cut through P1 and Q1, and there it is. So that is a more price elastic supply curve, S2. This time, growers are more easily able to respond to rising demand. The consequence is that quantity rises to Q3, uh, and the price does go up, but it doesn't go up as much. It only goes up from P1 to P3 because of the higher price elasticity of demand, okay? That's a price elastic supply curve. Uh, the coefficient is greater than one. Uh, it could be the case that growers can just increase the supply onto the market uh, without any increase in cost. This would give us supply curve three. How would you describe that? Well, that would be a perfectly elastic supply. The coefficient is infinity there. And in fact, if there's an increase in demand, there's no change in price. We stick at price P1, the quantity moves out to Q4 because producers and growers can simply meet the increase in demand by supplying more avocado onto the market. Well, of course, you know, which, which of these is likely depends on certain situations. By the way, I haven't drawn in this video a fixed supply curve where the, where the supply curve is vertical. If you have a fixed supply curve, the, the, the elasticity of supply is zero, meaning that supply can't change at all if there's a change in demand. I haven't put that one in the diagram, but that is sometimes tested in exams. But what about the conditions? What, what, what makes supply inelastic? What makes dem, uh, supply elastic? Let's just finish with this then. That's, here's a great slide if you want to take a screenshot for your revision notes. Question I'm asking here is what are the main conditions when supply is price inelastic? Inelastic, low coefficient of elasticity. Well, it could be that firms are operating close to full capacity. They don't have much spare manufacturing capacity, perhaps during an economic boom. And a good example of that was the limited manufacturing capacity, certainly in the short term, for PPE and other health equipment in the early stages of the 2020 pandemic. Supply tends to be priced inelastic when businesses have low levels of stocks. So they may not be able to release much onto the market because stock levels are low. And, and that often is a result of the fact that it costs money 
to stock goods and services, particularly if you think about fresh food, fresh drink, etc. That has to be refrigerated, kept at a certain temperature, and that can cost money. And oftentimes businesses try to limit the amount of stock they hold. At an international level, supply elasticity can be affected by trade barriers. Uh, delays at the ports, for example, or import quotas, which limit the amount of goods and services that can come into a country that might help to satisfy demand. But if they if they have stringent quotas, that makes supply less elastic. It could be that businesses are operating in the short term and they have a fixed amount of capital and land, and therefore they can't suddenly ramp up production in the short term. They can in the long term because they can increase the quantity of all inputs, but maybe not in the short term. The labour market might be a key reason why supply is inelastic. Businesses might want to increase production but face shortages of key workers. And a good example of that, I think, recently, you're, I'm sure you're aware of, is a shortage of, of trained and tested HGV drivers. The length of the growing period is obviously a factor, particularly for farm products, agricultural goods. Um, there are some growing seasons, there's clearly a time delay there. Although increasingly, farmers are finding ways of growing products uh, all through the year, but in many ways, there's still a growing period that can limit supply. And I think another one worth mentioning is that sometimes the length of the planning and testing periods come into play. If you think about new housing, the supply of new housing is typically price inelastic. It takes months to get planning permission. Often planning applications are amended, rejected, etc. Uh, often there's local opposition. If you think about the supply of new vaccines during the pandemic, again, it took months to, to, to develop and test the vaccines before rolling it out at scale. So these are some of the key factors that influence uh, supply and make it inelastic. You can reverse these things, of course, when you talk about elastic supply. So there we go. This is a really, really key concept. I think it really does appear on the vast majority of advanced information for 2022. So please do revise it and good luck with any question on it. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay curious, stay happy, stay positive. See you again sometime soon.